About 10.30 local time, a skirmish between the Lebanese armed forces and the Israeli defense forces erupted near the Lebanese village of Adisha across the border from Miskavam. The details are still being disputed. It appears that a firefight was followed by strikes on the Lebanese side of the border by Israeli artillery and attack helicopters. There were casualties, including deaths, on both sides. It appears that a squad-sized element of Israeli troops moved into the space between an Israeli security fence and the border itself in order to do some routine maintenance of the area. Things like removing shrubbery that are obstructing lines of sight and dealing with any potential security vulnerabilities in the fence. According to reports, both the UN peacekeepers and the Lebanese military were supposedly notified, though one report has suggested that Beirut attempted to deny permission for the operation, which was taking place entirely on the Israeli side of the border. In any event, this would suggest that the location and timing of the Israeli movement was known to the Lebanese beforehand. And Israeli reports are now claiming a deliberate ambush by soldiers wearing the uniforms of Lebanese armed forces. There are also indications that the terrain may have been favorable to the Lebanese side. But while claims and counterclaims can be expected to fly in both directions, they're not currently signed that either side intends to let the incident escalate into a broader dispute. And for that, we'll need to examine the political context more closely, and we'll turn to my colleague, Riva Bala. Even though we don't see this border clash escalating into a larger military confrontation between Israel and Lebanon, it is important to analyze the political context of what took place. Right now in Lebanon, tensions are running particularly high over a special tribunal over the the 2005 assassination of former Lebanese Prime Minister Rafik al-Hariri. And the whole reason that this tribunal has turned into such a crisis is because the investigation is expected to indict members of Hezbollah. Meanwhile, Syria, who was very likely involved in this assassination, is getting a free pass thanks to its own diplomatic maneuverings. In fact, the Syrians have quietly been working with the Saudis against Hezbollah in this probe. Naturally, Hezbollah has become very upset by all this and is being urged by its patrons in Iran to lay siege on Beirut, instigate Sunni clashes, um, and essentially cause trouble in Lebanon in response to the tribunal. Everybody's now watching to see if the tribunal is actually going to follow through in indicting Hezbollah and if Hezbollah will actually follow through with its threats. Uh, Now, the Lebanese military, which is very weak and fractured, is caught in the middle of this mess. The army does not want to confront Hezbollah militarily in the event of a domestic crisis. And our own sources in the Lebanese military indicate that they were trying to avoid a major crisis. What they were trying to do in this latest border skirmish was to try to divert attention from the special tribunal crisis to the Israeli threat and try to galvanize support among Lebanese factions in support of the Lebanese army. Um, it, evidently, things got out of hand once uh, it became clear that there were deaths involved in the border clash. But we're still getting indications from all sides, including Hezbollah, that none of the players in this conflict are willing to escalate the situation any further right now. 